Flexible points are generally better than airline-specific points like United, Delta, or Southwest. But what if you've already racked up a lot of these different types of airline-specific points? What are you supposed to do then? Well, in today's tutorials, we're going to cover some of the best ways to spend airline-specific points with the different U.S. carriers. Also, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I'm going to do my best to describe what's going on on the screen, but we do also have these tutorials complete with video and screen share on the GeoBreeze Travel YouTube channel and on Spotify video exclusives as well. Okay, let's jump right in with how to use Delta Miles. Okay, if you have a bunch of Delta points, what do you even do with those? Because if we look on seats.arrow and explore Delta, if we are trying to get from North America to Europe in business class, a lot of the departure airports from North America are not in the United States. It's either going to be Panama or Costa Rica. And then by the time we do get to something that is in the United States, these are all Mexico. Let's see, if we just search for JFK, there's nothing, LAX, there's nothing in business class for 2024. We search from Atlanta, there's nothing from Atlanta either to Europe. Everything is just in economy and those can cost more than some business class tickets. These are costing 60,000, 70,000, 80,000 points to fly from Atlanta to Europe. So it's gonna be hard to find some flights over to Europe. Let's see if there's anything with Asia. You could fly from Hawaii over to Japan, but that's gonna cost 165,000 points, which is definitely more than the 10,000 points per hour threshold. That is the maximum. I would be willing to pay to fly in business class is 10,000 points per hour and this 165,000 is just a bit steep for me and all of these would require positioning to Hawaii anyway. If we did something from another major airport, there's not really much available. There's this one with Atlanta that costs 370,000 points to fly from Atlanta to Japan in business class, which is not a good redemption. So Asia might be out as well. Let's see if there's anything in Africa. Nothing at all, nothing in Africa. And let's check South America. So from here, they will have a few more options. You could get from JFK over to Punakana for about 36,000 points in business class or 12,000 in economy. You could do Miami over to Boca de Colombia for about 18,000 in economy or 39,000 in business class. So it looks like your sweet spot for Delta would probably be the North America to South America range. You can get some of these flights cheaper using British Airways Avios to fly on American Airlines, but if you do really wanna fly on a Delta flight to South America and the Caribbean might be your best bet. But there is also another region to region that would work well. So if you are flying outside of the United States, if you wanted to go from Europe over to Asia, and you have a lot of Delta points. This is where you can get quite a bit of value out of your Delta points. Because here you could fly from London over to Tel Aviv or Amsterdam to Tel Aviv for only 42.5 thousand points in business class with either Air France or Virgin Atlantic or a lot of other Delta partners. Similarly, you could do that to fly from Frankfurt over to Lebanon for only 42.5 thousand points in business class. You could fly from Italy over to Saudi Arabia for 42.5 thousand points. So those are some really great sweet spots. You could also fly into the far eastern side of Asia from Europe. For example, you could fly Vienna to Taipei for only 80,000 Delta points with China Airlines. You could fly from France over to Bangkok for only 80,000 points. So if you have a lot of Delta Sky Miles and you're like, I can't get anything good from the United States with these, everything's costing 200,000 points or more, looking into different flights between Europe and Asia, if that's something that you can fit into your itinerary, would be a great way to use your Delta Miles. If you have just a few thousand Delta Miles where you're like, I don't have anywhere near 80,000 Delta Miles, what do I do with these few Delta Sky Pesos? You could just Google Delta Sky Club menu and then click on the current food selection or bar menu. And this particular food menu doesn't have points prices on here, but the premium upgrade menu for drinks does where you can get these different wines, beers, spirits, cocktails for free in a Delta lounge. But if you wanted to do some premium wines, 
you could have this glass of Prosecco for only 600 miles or the whole bottle for 3000. If you wanted to get fancy and get a bottle of this particular cuvee for 9,200 miles, the normal price is $138. So it's a 1.5 cents per point redemption, which isn't fantastic, but it's not terrible as far as Delta points go. And so you could do that with a variety of different premium wines, or you could also do this with half bottles of sparkling wine or spend a few hundred points on some premium cocktails in a Delta Sky Miles lounge. So if you have just a few hundred remaining points with Delta here or there, this could be a fun way to just use them up on premium drinks. If you're new to points and miles and you feel a little bit overwhelmed by what just happened there, don't worry. We offer a free points and miles 101 course for you to help you earn and redeem points for your first redemption. The course covers everything you need to know to earn points and get your first flight covered. Grab the free course at geobreezetravel.com slash free course or check out the link in the description box. Our next tutorial covers what to do with Southwest points and also how to make sure that you are getting all set up for getting buy one get one free Southwest flights for up to two years. Don't mess this up. All right, let's go over what do you do with Southwest points? The answer is whatever you want because there are no bad redemptions with Southwest. It is revenue based and the points price for any flight is directly tied to the cash price. So as long as you are getting a good deal with the cash price, you are getting a good deal with the points price. Especially if you see something like this where if there is a sale where you have 50% off of base fares, that means you're also getting 50% off of the points price. By the time you see this video, this particular Southwest sale will be over. But what I would recommend doing is following Southwest Air on social media and just following their stories because here they will post whenever there's a sale. You can find what promo codes to use for it and then check some different flights that you want to do on southwest.com. Even if it's a flight that you've already booked, Southwest is one of the most flexible with canceling flights, changing dates, all of that for no additional fee. So you can always just cancel your flight and rebook it with the cheaper points price or cash price. So let's say that we wanted to fly from Kansas City to Austin, Texas. What you do is just click on points and then click search. They let you know the promo code has been applied. And so you can do flights like this for as low as 4,000 points. That's a really, really cheap flight if you wanted to do something like that or 3,300 points if you wanted to do the wanna get away fare. So Southwest is super, super easy as far as using your points. Don't worry about making a bad redemption. As long as the cash price looks good, the points price is gonna look pretty good too. However, what is a little bit more complicated that people want from Southwest is the companion pass. We are about to enter companion pass season and here is how to not mess it up. Please do not screw yourself out of an entire year. Buy one, get one free flights. Here is how to make sure you do it correctly. So if you're not familiar with Companion Pass, basically if you earn 135,000 points in a calendar year, you will earn Companion Pass for the following full year, plus the remainder of the year in which you earned it. So that means if you get Companion Pass in November of 2023, you are going to have Companion Pass for the rest of 2023, so November, December, plus all of 2024. But what would be more ideal is if you can get Companion Pass in early 2024, let's say January or February, then you have buy one, get one free flights for the rest of 2024, which is like 10 or 11 months, plus all of 2025. And with Companion Pass, whenever you buy a flight on Southwest, whether it's with cash, whether it's with points, you can designate the Companion to fly with you for free. All you need to pay is the taxes and fees, which is usually $5.60 if it is domestic. How do you earn 135,000 points? That seems like a lot. Or you could fly 100 qualifying one-way flights, which seems completely out of reach for most people. So here is how most people in the points and miles world earn this. They get two different credit cards in December or January. Don't get this too early. I would recommend waiting until December and probably not even using the card until January 1st just to make sure you don't mess this up. But what most people are gonna do is they're going to get the Southwest Rapid Rewards Performance Business Credit Card because you're gonna get 80,000 bonus points 
after you spend $5,000 on purchases in the first few months from the account opening. And you'll earn points on that $5,000 of purchases as well, so you'll earn about 85,000 points this way. So how do you earn the rest of it to get 135,000? You can also apply for a Southwest personal card. So for example, here is the Southwest Rapid Rewards Priority Card, where you'll earn 50,000 bonus points after spending $1,000 on purchases in the first three months from the account opening. So you'll earn another 51,000 points there. That gets you to 136,000 points. So you are good to go with Companion Pass just from that, and you'll also receive 10,000 points credited just from having a Southwest card. The way to time this, don't get this in October because you're gonna be rushing by the end of it. I would get these cards in late December to be safe, maybe even into January. If you really wanna get it in mid-November, that's fine too. You just need to make sure you do not accidentally cross the sign-up bonus too early. Because let's say that you get the Southwest Rapid Rewards Performance Business Credit Card in November, and then you accidentally spend $5,000 on it before December 31st, and all of those 80,000 bonus points post to your account before the end of the year. Well now, these are credited towards 2023. And then let's say your sign-up bonus for the personal card posts in 2024. Now you have not earned 135,000 points in a calendar year. It's split between two different calendar years. So no companion pass for you. That is why I really, really caution people with the timing of this. If you wanna go for companion pass, don't apply for these cards any earlier than November 1st. And even then, if you wanna play it completely safe, just stick it in a sock drawer. Stick your Southwest cards into a sock drawer and don't bring them out until mid to late December. If you wanna be really safe, wait until after the new year hits and then meet the sign-up bonuses as fast as you can. Once January 1st hits, put the $5,000 on the Southwest Rapid Rewards Performance Business Card. Plan out how you do that before you get to January 1st. Put the $1,000 to meet this sign-up bonus on the Southwest Rapid Rewards Priority Credit Card. Earn 50,000 points here. And then you will be all set to go with Companion Pass in January 2024. You'll have it for the entirety of the rest of 2024 plus all of 2025 where you can bring a companion with you for free on Southwest flights. So it's basically buy one, get one free flights on Southwest for you and a companion for up to two years. That is how you make sure you get the maximum value out of Southwest Companion Pass and that you do not accidentally mess up when these sign up bonuses hit, because if it hits too early, then you're just kind of out of luck. If you're interested in learning more about what cards to get to earn Companion Pass or to level up your points game for another trip, we offer free credit card consultations at geobreezetravel.com slash consultations. We'll send you personalized recommendations based on your particular goals, budget, and lifestyle. Or if you already know what card you want next and you'd like to support this show when you apply for your next card, we have all of our affiliate links listed on geobreezetravel.com slash cards, which you can also find in the description box. Next up are some ideas for how to use American Airlines miles. If I had to be stuck with a pile of airline specific points, American Airlines would definitely be my pick. Here's why. Let's talk about some of the best ways to use American Airlines miles. These are actually really, really useful. They're not devalued nearly as much as Delta. Here are some of my favorite ways to use it. So let's say that we wanted to go from Dallas into Europe. Most of the American Airlines flights are going to route through London, which has crazy taxes and fees. But there's another sweet spot in Europe, which isn't gonna cost nearly as much in taxes and cost the exact same amount of points. And that is if you wanted to route through Helsinki anywhere into Eastern Europe or beyond from there. So let's say that we wanted to do this when it's reasonably warm in Finland around July of next year. From here, you can click on the calendar button with American Airlines, and then you can just filter down to business or first class. And you are looking for where there is the green bubble, which shows where there is saver space, where it'll only cost you 57.5 thousand points to fly from Dallas over to Europe. And for some of these, you can see that the taxes and fees are only $5.60. Sometimes it's $11. And this is gonna be so much cheaper than if you're crossing through London. I can already tell this is a London flight because the taxes and fees up here are $752 versus if we were to go the day before 
on July 23rd, it is 57.5 thousand miles plus only $5.60. So if we apply changes there, you will see some flights operated by Finnair from Dallas over Helsinki for only 57.5 thousand points plus $5.60. So if you're looking for a way to use American Airlines miles to fly over to Europe, and not have to pay a bunch of taxes and fees because you want to avoid London Heathrow Airport, going through Helsinki would be the way to do it. Another really popular use of American Airlines miles for partner flights is with Japan Airlines. This can be one of the cheapest ways to fly over to Asia, starting at only 60,000 points in business class. So let's say that we want to go from Dallas over to Haneda sometime in July next year. Once again, click on the calendar, filter down to business or first class. There's actually nothing in the 60,000 point range, but we do have some dates in July that have 80,000 points. So let's click on one of these and apply changes and see what's going on here. And that is actually a Japan Airlines first class flight, not even a business class flight. And the business class flights on some of these other options cost 275,000 points, 450,000 points. These are ridiculous, but 80,000 plus $5.60 for non-stop from Dallas over to Tokyo in Japan Airlines first class is a fantastic deal. So if you see any of these where it's 80,000 points, definitely jump on it. That's an amazing use of American Airlines miles. And lastly, American Airlines miles are very popular for booking Qatar Airways Q suites for only 70,000 points. To find this award availability, it's become a lot more challenging. So what I would recommend doing is going to seats.aero, click on explore, and then American Airlines. From here, you're gonna search from North America over to Asia. I would recommend getting the pro filter and showing extended availability, and then sorting by business class and typing in DOH in the search bar to filter down to the Doha flights. As you hover over these options in the business class column, you wanna look for the ones that say QR. So we have a few options here, but all of them are going to be last minute flight sometime in October. If we're looking for anything in 2024, a lot of these are going to connect through England and they're gonna have much higher taxes and fees because they're not direct. They go through London and they are not on the Q suites we are looking for. So availability is super sparse right now, but if you wanted to jump on one of these last minute flights, here's how you would do it. So let's say that we like this one between LAX and Doha on October 5. Let's see if that's still available. So on AA.com, you would search between LAX and Doha on the date that Seats.Arrow shows you, which is October 5th. Fully acknowledging that by the time you watch this video, October 5th could have passed. So it'll be a little bit shifted in the timeline, but you can search Seats.Arrow for the last minute availability whenever you're watching this video and go ahead and click search. And here we see the flight from LAX over to Doha for 70,000 points plus $7.65 in business class with Qatar Airways. We can click on details. We see that this is the A350. And if you want to know what that means, you could go to somewhere like Europa.com. From here, you would go down to Qatar Airways and look for the A350. Do one of these where it'll show you the layout or you could also copy in this flight number, QR740, and go to seatguru.com. You'd say, airline is Qatar, October 5th, flight number is 740. Here we see that flight from LAX over to Doha, and we do see the Q Suites layout where it matches between that and Aerolopa right over here. A fun thing about American Airlines is they don't charge you for positioning flights as well. So if I wanted to take this flight from Las Vegas over to LAX, over to Doha, even if we add in this first positioning flight, the cost stays exactly the same at 70,000 points. And you can add on a positioning flight on either side as well. And it might cost a little bit more, but not too many more points. Like here, if I did Las Vegas over to Los Angeles, over to Doha, and then back over to Tunisia in Northern Africa, then the entire thing is only 75,000 points plus $51.70, with this most important long middle leg being in Qatar Airways Q-Suites. So that is one of the best ways to use American Airlines miles. Are you enjoying these types of step-by-step -step tutorials? If yes, please let me know. Click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for even more points and miles tips every week. We release a weekly video with these types of step-by-step -step tutorials. And 
We also have a podcast where I interview points enthusiasts about different strategies every week. As you just saw in those last tutorials, American Airlines miles are super valuable, but they can be pretty difficult to come by since Built is the only flexible points currency that transfers over. Well, there's another set of airline points that can be super valuable for flying to destinations where other programs just don't have sweet spots. And these points are even harder to earn since there are no flexible transfer partners at this time. So if you have a pile of Alaska miles sitting in your account, consider it as a blessing, not a curse. Here's how you can make the most out of your Alaska points. Now let's talk about Alaska Airlines miles. If you wanted to fly between North America and Europe, a really great sweet spot is to fly over to Frankfurt, Germany. It's only gonna cost 55,000 points in business class operated either by British Airways or Condor. They have a lot of flights out of Boston, Massachusetts for this. If in the search bar on Seats.era we change this to say Frankfurt and then pick a particular month, we'll also see flights from JFK in addition to Boston. You can find flights from Edmonton, Seattle, and a few other airports as well. And then once you get into the Cancun region or BWI, Miami, and some of the other ones, then the price could go up to 65,000 points to fly one way in business, but not a bad redemption at all. If you wanna use Alaska Airlines miles to fly from North America over to Asia, you'll see a lot of the same availability between Alaska and American Airlines miles. For example, Seattle or SFO over to Tokyo is gonna to cost 60,000 miles for one person, one way in Japan Airlines business class. But where you can really, really get your Alaska miles to go far is if you are country hopping within Asia. So let's say that you wanted to go between Taipei and Vietnam, or if you wanted to go between the Philippines and Taipei. There's going to be a lot of these different flights between Taipei and other airports within Asia, and you can fly them for as low as 15,000 points per person in business class. And to make this even more exciting, the IATA code JX, which is what you see when you hover over this price in Seats.Aero, that means it's Starlux, which is the newest airline operating out of Taiwan. It has gotten amazing reviews. So if you want to fly Starlux, but you are having some trouble finding any availability between the US and Taipei, doing some inter-Asia hopping between Taipei and Vietnam, the Philippines, Japan, or many other Asian hubs is really doable with Alaska points. Another really great use for Alaska miles is if you wanna go down to South America. Normally, it can be really hard to find availability to places like Brazil, Argentina, or Chile, or anything that's far south in South America, but there's actually quite a bit of availability with Alaska Airlines miles. So for example, the main airport that you are going to access if you wanna fly down to Brazil is going to be Sao Paulo, which is airport code GRU. You can fly between JFK to Sao Paulo or Boston to Sao Paulo or LAX, Miami, even Orlando, and it's only going to cost 45,000 points per person one way in business class to fly on LATAM Airlines. Alternatively, if you don't want to go to Brazil and you want to go to Chile, the airport code for Santiago is going to be SCL, and once again, it's only going to cost 45,000 points to go between cities like Miami or even LAX down to Santiago. 45,000 points per person one way in business class. If you wanna to go to Lima in Peru, you can fly from Atlanta or JFK. And once again, only 45,000 points per person in business class. But this actually gets better. What if you wanted to do some country hopping using Alaska Airlines miles? You can actually build in a free stopover. Here's how. Let's say that you wanted to fly from Los Angeles through Chile into Argentina. What you can do is go to alaskaair.com and click all search options. From here, you're gonna select multi-city. You're gonna pick a date from Los Angeles over to Santiago, and then a day from Santiago over to Buenos Aires, Argentina. And then from there, you're gonna checkbox use miles and then find flights. And you can also use seats.arrow to figure out when there's actually gonna be availability between those two cities. So for example, here it's wide open in July 2024. If I wanted to go between LAX to Santiago, July 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, there is a ton of availability here. 
It's going to have less availability if we also want to connect into Argentina. So let's see what's available on Alaska Airlines. Nothing available on July 3 here, but if we pick July 5th, then here we do see options between LAX over to Santiago, then Santiago over to Buenos Aires for only 45,000 points plus $44 in taxes and fees. And if we select the flight, then we're gonna see that this first leg is going to be in business. And then this is just a short hop over to Argentina two days later, which is going to be in coach. So if you are looking to fly between North America and South America to Chile, Argentina, Brazil, or anything like that, Alaska miles are a fantastic way to go. So what do you do if you find those great flight deals to and from South America, but you have no way to connect your itinerary? Well, that's where our last set of tutorials is gonna come in handy and we'll even show you how to fly Swiss Airlines first class for free across South America, coming right up. And if you're looking for even more next level ways to make the most out of your points, we have a couple of options for you. The first way is through the GeoBreeze Travel Patreon, which you can access through patreon.com slash GeoBreeze Travel. Through the Patreon, we can prepare personalized step-by-step -step tutorials based on the exact routes that you wanna see. We also host a live group coaching session every month. You can ask any questions that you have about points, travel, or anything else in the open forum. We also have a lot of people who join the $5 level just to say, thanks for the re-content. And I am all here for that. Thank you, I appreciate it so much. The second option is for business owners or individuals who spend more than $100,000 a year on expenses. If that's you, we would love to chat with you about our points portfolio management offer. I don't know if you know, but you can get some incredible luxury travel with that level of spend. Book a free intro chat with us at geobreezetravel.com slash intro call to learn more. Okay, up next, let's go over my favorite way to use United Points and how you can structure your itinerary to fly in Swiss Airlines first class for zero points and only the cost of taxes and fees. Even though this is a notoriously difficult flight product to book as an award ticket. So let's say that we go ahead and decide to book those flights using Alaska miles from LAX down through Chile into Argentina around July 5th. And then we also find a flight that we like for the way back. Let's say that we wanna cross into Brazil, back up into New York around July 10, 11, 14, somewhere around here. Well, there might be a few problems. One, let's say you're like me and you're based in a smaller airport like Las Vegas. You need to figure out how to even get to LAX in the first place to take this first leg. Then once you land in Argentina, you need to figure out how to get from Argentina to Brazil. And then once you land in New York from your Brazil flight, you need to figure out how to get back from New York into your home airport of Las Vegas. And this is a prime use case for where the United Airlines excursionist perk would come into play. And I think it's one of the best ways to use United points. So what you would do here is go to united.com and click on advanced search. Once you're on the advanced search page, you're gonna click on multi-city and make sure you show price and miles for flight only. This is where you're gonna to piece together the different parts of your flight. So your first leg needs to go from Las Vegas over to Los Angeles so that you can jump on your flight from Los Angeles down to South America. You wanna do that probably the day before your flight from Los Angeles to South America. So let's just say July 4th. Then you're gonna need a connecting flight between when you land in Argentina and how you're gonna get over to Brazil. So here's that second piece from Buenos Aires over to Sao Paulo. And then you're going to need a flight back from New York, back to Las Vegas since you booked a flight from Brazil over to New York using this Alaska trick over here. This follows the rules of the United Excursionist Perk for a variety of reasons. So there are a lot of rules that you have to keep in mind here. The first one, your first leg has to start in the United States. Your last leg has to end in the United States. Your second leg is going to be free if it is completely contained in the same region outside of the United States. And so here, Buenos Aires and Sao Paulo, Brazil are both outside of the US region and they are both in the same region of Southern South America. And then from here, if your itinerary is correctly set up, you can either select business, economy, or wherever you wanna go. Let's actually select business and see what we get from there. So you can go ahead and find flights. So here is our first leg from Las Vegas over to LAX. We could just book this for 5.6 thousand points in economy, which is completely fine. There's saver space here. Or you could select 30,000 points for first class. 
I'm actually gonna select first class even though it's only a one hour flight and I'm gonna show you why in just a sec. Normally this would be a terrible redemption, but there are exceptions to the rule. So now, as long as your flight is correctly set up, you should see this zero out on the next page where your flight from Argentina over to Brazil is going to be completely free. And since I selected a business class flight from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, I can select either an economy, business class, or first class flight for free. You just need to pay the $76 of taxes and fees to get from Buenos Aires over to Brazil. If I had selected the economy flight on the screen before, where it was only gonna be less than 6,000 points, then I would only be able to get the economy one for free here. Also, note, this flight is operated by Swiss International Airlines. So you could fly first class Swiss for free you just need to pay taxes and fees for this two and a half hour, three hour flight. Swiss Airlines is very nice. I hear great things about the first class flight experience. And I also hear it is notoriously difficult to book yourself into Swiss first class with points. So if you want to jump on this flight, this is a fantastic way to do this. There are tons of different fifth freedom flights that operate between Argentina and Brazil today. We're just going over the Swiss example, but you can actually book this through Air Canada. It's about 15 to 20,000 points. You could fly it with Air Canada has a fifth freedom flight. Ethiopian, Turkish Airlines has a fifth freedom flight. There are so many different airlines that operate between Argentina and Brazil. So if you wanted to just keep hopping back and forth between Argentina and Brazil on these little three hour flights and experience lots of different business class flights from all around the world, that's an easy way to get a lot of business class content. So here, let's go ahead and say we want to fly Swiss first class between Argentina and Brazil for zero miles, just $76.40. And then we just need to book the last leg of this. So this can be either in economy or business. It's about a five and a half hour flight. Let's just say that we are okay doing this in economy because I don't wanna pay 100,000 points or even 60,000 points to fly five hours in business class on United Regional. So we will fly from Newark, New York into Las Vegas for 19.8 thousand miles plus $5 and 60 cents. And so the total cost for this itinerary from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, then Argentina to Brazil, then New York to Las Vegas for these first two being in first class and this last piece being an economy would be less than 50,000 miles per person plus $87 in taxes and fees. And then to get between Los Angeles and Buenos Aires, from that last example, that would only cost 45,000 Alaska miles, plus about $44 in taxes. And then to get from Brazil to New York would cost the same, 45,000 Alaska miles plus $44 in taxes and fees. So that's how you can put together a really incredible itinerary through South America with only just using some possibly leftover domestic points currencies that you have sitting there with Alaska and United. I hope you found those tutorials useful. Suggestions for future topics are always welcome. In the meantime, if you enjoyed these tutorials, I think you'll enjoy this video next.